Hello, you're live. You're back here on Football 360. We're live every Sunday from 8 o'clock to 9 o'clock. We've been talking about the Black Satellites and the 20 team, but we'll quickly link to the, uh, the, the senior national team, the Black Stars. They were in action this afternoon. It was a very rainy day in Accra. The Ghanaians took on the Mauritius counterpart, and we won seven goals to one. Congratulations, the Black Stars. Let's have a look at the goals. It's a good ball out wide to find Aful. Aful's cross in a chance, yeah! And we've got the opener, wonderfully worked goal! But a chance for number two! Jordan Ayu turns scorer this time! It's three! Easy as you like, Asamojian! That's a goal. That's another one. Oh my word. <laughs> Almost missed that one completely. There you go. A somewhat young. Free kick there. Did do it. It's a good ball in and a chance here. They've got one back. They have scored one. That's a good ball out wide. Now they're lining up again in the middle here. Could be a chance for number five. Easy as you like. Jordan Ayu gets his second of the game. Nice ball and a chance here. And there's number six. There's a chance here. We're live back here on Football 360. We're discussing issues right here in the studio. The Black Stars uh, winning seven goals to one. You just saw the results, guys. There isn't a lot to say about that particular game, but the truth is that we've got to give them credit because they won seven goals to one. You could blink and miss a goal because it kept coming. Kept five, coming. Yeah, five goals. It could have been ten. Half. It could have been twelve. Yes, if you thick and fast in the first half. Yeah, if you're a journalist and you you're writing, you're writing and watching and... at the same time, it gets a bit tiring. And I think I faced that today. <laughs> yeah, I faced at, at a point I was like. Stop scoring already. <laughs> I, I really have to get the adjectives and everything to describe every go. Yeah. By the time you are done, you've written thesis. <laughs> you don't need that. And I think we should give them credit because every now and then we worry about um, our attacking potentials. We know that a lot of our goals come from the, from the middle. But if you have two strikers getting a brace today yeah. in Jordan Ayu and Asamojan, you know Asamojan could have gotten more than yeah. two goals. There were sitters he missed that was unpardonable or unimaginable. Takes, takes you some years back yes, with but I look at that, yeah, I look at the 7-1. <laughs> And for me, it's a reminder of how Akwesia Pia beat Lesotho in the beginning of the qualifiers for the 2013 Nations Cup. It's, it's almost the same. Mm -hmm. So perhaps you can look ahead and say that it is good enough. Yeah, I think for a lot of people, for lots of people out there, it's, it's not the, the fact that we beat Mauritius that was the issue because it, was, it would have been a bigger news, if, uh, a bigger story if we had lost with Mauritius. But it's the manner in which we won the game. We won the game seven goals to one. Does that go to say that uh, Avram Grant is more of an attacking-minded coach? Because again, if you look at the, the lineup he fielded, which Jeffrey Schlopp even played way up front with Babaraman behind, it tells you that he's more interested in winning and scoring goals. Yeah, and uh, answering that, I'll start from the AFCON 2017, you know, against, uh, I mean, when we started our first game against Senegal, remember okay, he started with a three-back system. 2014. Yeah, I mean, 2015, 2015 sorry. Yeah. He started with, uh, you know, a, a three-back system. That clearly told you his intent. When he, when he was first, you know, uh, you know uh, showcased to journalists, I remember that press conference, I asked him what his philosophy was going to be, and he says that he was not really definite, you know, on any particular system, but what brings the result as and when. And that showed the pragmatism he's, we, we saw in the AFCON, and I think we are seeing that now. He's varying tactics. He's trying to vary the playing body, even though a lot of journalists are thinking that, you know, he has not really been the kind of coach that we thought he was going to be. People are thinking that he's a lazy coach in court, you know. <laughs> but I think that, for me, the introduction of Bernard Mensah, you know, told you that you, you, may not, you may not necessarily like the fact that he's not bringing a lot of local players in there, but trust me, he is doing some work. He would not have to change a whole 11 for you to know that he's working. One player at a time, and that that gradually can change the, you know, the philosophy and the thinking and the mentality of that team. And for me, 
when I look at the, the opposition that we came up against, Mauritius, who, I mean, some people will be asking, who are Mauritius? I mean, that, that, almost everybody knows who the black stars are, who comes in, who goes out, who replaces who. But for Mauritius, you're looking at a team that have actually not won in their last nine games. I mean, they, I mean, they, I mean, they, they, I mean, the manager we saw wasn't Did, wasn't their substantive manager. DDSX. DDSX was was sacked, you know, uh, after after, after some, not getting there, results. There were them. times in the game they looked like some amateurs. Like, yeah, I mean, is it, it, some guys were like Sunday fo Sunday Sunday football. I, I, I looked like, at them and I, I and I had hope with my football career. <laughs> <laughs> I almost thought I could I mean, I get off that pitch. Their, their, their head coach actually, friends. you know, uh, shaped up with a four-five-one. And that, that surprised me because a four-five-one formation, you were thinking they, 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 they shouldn't be light in midfield. And that's where the Black Stars dominated. The Black Stars dominated from that particular you know, uh, midfield positions. Then it translated to attacking positions. And that's when we, we really saw the efficiency of the Black Stars. For me, I thought Mar Mauritius were, 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 were no match to the Black Stars. But the Black Stars should, and I say this again, should not think this is what they are going to be facing for the entire group stage. Because Rwanda are a very tricky opposition. Okay, we wonder one Mozambique nil in that particular uh, uh, game in that group, and that is Group H. That's where Ghana is as well. Uh, but we've won seven goals to one, so we're on top of the group now. Uh, we we'll look ahead to the other games in the qualifiers. We've got to play Rwanda. We've got to play Mozambique. But quickly, we'll move away from the Black Stars into more important issues. I say more important issues because I'm sure it's a story that will run around for another couple of weeks. We're just seeing just the beginning. And I remember asking uh, the PR of the Ghana Football Association last week in terms of the FIFA wranglings, in terms of all the FIFA crisis issues. I questioned him, asking, how vulnerable does it put the Ghana Football Association, given the way even the biggest body in football, FIFA, is under a lot of investigations? And just when I talked about that last week, Sunday, this week, we saw the big story where the Attorney General's office issued a white paper with regards to that commission of uh, inquiry in terms of the last World Cup 2014, the German Fair Commission was instituted and quite a lot of people passed through that particular uh, you know a commission in terms of appearing before the commission, the likes of Kwesi Nyantichi and the former minister for youth and sport FEA Ankara. So the story came out that the attorney general issued that white paper and there were some few important notes to take out of that particular white paper. The issue about a one million deficit, a little bit over one million deficit in that in, in the accounting that they think that it's got to be a forensic audit into and also there was a two hundred thousand dollars paid to Kwesi Nyantechi, who is the uh, president of the FA, in terms of organizing a friendly match, also needed to be looked into. And the fact that the stop opera continued all week, I think the day after the GFA tried to organize a press conference, which actually never really happened because uh, the, the people to answer questions never turn, out, uh, turn up at the, 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 the press conference. Uh, so obviously, quite a lot has happened this week. Uh, we just want to talk about it right here on Football 360. I asked Sonny that question last weekend. He was quite emphatic. He said, okay, if somebody's got anything against the FA, and I'm not sure my, my, my platform was, a lot, was the first place he had ever said that, but he's mentioned that over and over again. If somebody got something against the FA, the person should walk in. The person, when they've got their, their, their financial accounts, uh, financial statements out there. People can come and question them and all that. But again, after the Jabba Fair report, it's obvious that there's, quite, there's got to be a lot happening with the FA in the next couple of weeks. Do you think that just like what has happened to FIFA, this is just a tip of the iceberg. We're yet to see quite a lot of things happen to the FIFA in the next couple of I had of a weeks. feeling that whatever is happening to FIFA will trickle down on all federations. And once CAF or FIFA said Blatter began by saying that there should be reforms and a term ceiling for presidency, CAF sang that, that chorus and I thought it was going to trickle down to the local organization. Federations. I just didn't think it will happen this this quickly. But we woke up to um, the the report. The MFA report. The FA has refused to be G3. They have sounded confident, saying that their books are. Are you sure are they were okay. not G3? Because 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 they rushed in, in calling for a press conference, and then at the press conference. They tell journalists that they are unable to continue with the press conference because and their lawyers... I mean, you, the, you, the, you the should have taken advice from your lawyers before... All, all I thought about that press conference, I, I first asked, why the rush? That's what I'm saying. Your, your, your so books, that sounds... Your that looks very jittery. And all that, why the rush? But throughout, they, they have maintained one position. Our books are okay. And I'm saying that just allow the forensic to happen. Your books, your books are okay. I look... I've, I've read the reports over and over again. 
and um, there is one point about um, let uh, money two hundred thousand paid to Kotinyan Techi. I had an issue there. Paid to him as the president of the FA or paid to the to the to the JFA. I I wonder if it was paid to him directly. If it was, I think it was wrong. It should have gone to to the JFA. And there is there are a lot of things about how monies were used in friendly games and some were used to balance the books and all that. And I think the forensic forensic audit would do a lot of job. I look at the whole. The, the whole white paper, and I am not convinced about a few things. The fact that the three million that we took to Brazil actually embarrassed us, and it wasn't captured in the in the in the report or the white paper. How is that? I think we decided to set up this particular commission because after the all the all our problems began with the three million with the bonuses and everything. So how come nothing is captured in there? And you see issues that says that, okay, let a, a committee member who took a particular decision refund this money or it should be surcharged to the former minister, Elvis a free young Ankara. I haven't had opportunity of seeing the reports from the commission, but I still do not think that whatever we have seen As of the weapon. white paper is, 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 a true is reflection, it's a true reflection of the, the, yes, the full report. Oh, it's emphatic enough. I said here one time that if I were the president, I would milk this. I would milk this because people began getting interest during the session of the commission. People were beginning to say that maybe it's about time we, 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 we traveled on a certain course and make sure that everything is really done well. If you had issues with players and their bonuses, and the fact that they, they could almost decide exactly how much they want at any given time, and you couldn't resolve it, and you speak of negotiations. I don't know what it's changed, because we've always done negotiations. And it is the, the, the power of negotiations that took us to the exact problem we had in, in Brazil. We okay. could talk the whole day I, I'm gonna, about, I'm, about, yeah, about yeah, the white yeah, paper, yeah, because I think yeah. that there are a few buts and ifs in there. Yeah, I feel the journalists generally have, have had, a, journalists across the country have had quite a few buts and ifs on the white people because they thought it, it kind of exonerated government officials. And, and again, this evening, the, the former uh, youth and sports minister has issued a statement saying that he stands by his position as the fact that he's never embezzled funds and all that. But again, from a very layman's perspective, if you, follow, if you did follow the proceedings of the commission, there was something that was very obvious and very emphatic, which you didn't need in rocket science, was again, the financials of all the whole setup in terms of how money exchanged hands with, with regards to the FA, with mm -hmm. regards to the, the ministry and all that. We remember talking about uh, the uh, GF, uh, president's famous coefficient and the fact that how were they paid, he took the money and they shared it up. I mean, it was a bit funny. At that level, you would have expected things differently. In that part, in the white paper, we don't exactly see what the next steps are, what will be done next after all this. Well, I think it was, it was stated in there. But you see, the bits, the bits where Ghanaians want to actually see is that some people are getting ahead of, them, of, of themselves. They want to see some handcuffs you know, uh, uh, on people's wrists here and there. But that is not going to happen. I think they it's, want it's, to it's see a systematic something approach. definite. Exactly. Something definite. And that definite thing would happen after systematic approaches have been, have been made. Now, first thing, the white paper had to, had to be released. Uh, should I say that was supposed to be a reaction to the commission's report that was submitted to the presidency. Now, this was actually going to tell exactly what government wanted to do. Now, they said they are doing three things in this white paper. They are accepting some of the recommendations, they are accepting some with modifications, and they are rejecting some. Now, when you look at those that have been accepted, I mean, the, the, the sanctions and indictments in there, they are saying that we want to put, you know, the commission, you know, for you to understand the white paper, you need to have studied the reports, the 400 yes. page report, you know, that was uh, given to the presidency by the commission. I think it was 100 and they page said, or... Okay, but they, they said they wanted to, um, uh, to have a special investigative body, okay, to look into the matters. Now, government is saying that we are not going to accept that. We, even though we accept that there should be investigation, we are modifying that a bit. We rather would want to give that to the specialized people, being the BNI. Okay, for, I mean, so the BNI going to BNI is the one going to do the forensic. Exactly. Forensic, yeah. So now you are. So now you see we are getting somewhere. The, B, the BNI. Let's let's not forget. BNI are not are no jokers. 
BNI are very serious. I mean, when you but are in your house, agency, exactly. Well. When you when you are in your house and you hear the BNI is looking up uh, looking for you, you may you may just uh, just yeah, as but, well but, yeah, just be yeah, sweating but, all no, over. But, but, but the I, thing is that we are getting somewhere no, because the BNI think, will I, find different yeah, but I think, things to. But work I think on. in terms of the white paper, this, I'm not sure a lot of people are surprised or are not are, are probably not happy about the fact that questions have been asked of the GFA. I think quite a lot lot of people are more interested in the fact that the government, government officials have been exonerated in the white paper. Not exonerated, but they've been left a bit more, not as bad, badly on the loose. loose. On the loose, not as badly bruised as the FA officials. And again, you're talking about BNI, which is a government agency. How sure are we that we probably... No conflict still, of interest. No conflict of you see, interest. You see, you see, again, even though I side with you, yes, people raised, especially some journalists, raised a lot of concern when, uh, you know, the executive summary was submitted on Thursday yeah. uh, by the Attorney General when she was actually going on about the fact that it was G the GFA, the GFA. People were asking, what exactly is happening? It's not just a GFA that went to brazil the plane body went there the, the you know there was a ministry that joined them there there were lots of other parties in there why is it there's a ghana football association yes i understand that but when we got a, a hold of the whole uh, you know white paper People. we realized it's not just about the ghana football association the only few government officials that were mentioned in there i mean the most notable one was elvis if the former minister of sports uh, his name was mentioned in, in some brackets. First bracket was, uh, you know, uh, some of the amounts that he actually, you know, was supposed to use for some fun packs, you know, was supposed to be surcharged to him. Again, some that would, uh, you know, one other recommendation that would actually, you know, uh, uh, back, you know, your school of thought or, you know, some other school of thought was the fact that, you know, they said that the project committee that was supposed to handle a lot of their projects in there uh, had members that were matured. So, so then, they so were, then, they were all the adults. So then, so, so then, they, it means that task came exactly. So, to it, it, they, they can't single out Elvis Efriyanka alone. Some other members should also take, you know, responsibility. take responsibility. So, meaning that when it's got to do with charges, it, they should be. I mean, it should be surcharged to some of the other members as well, which I fully back because these are uh, you know fully grown men in, or women in there, and they are supposed to take responsibility of whatever comes their way. When, it, when it's positive, they'll take the glory. So when it goes against them, they should definitely take okay, the glory. Okay, quickly, link. we've got to go for our last commission. I just don't want to wake up one day and feel that the commission wasted our time. Yes, I, I don't You will to, feel I, that I, at a point. I, I, I don't want to, I, I so don't But are you beginning to, to feel that way? I am almost beginning to feel that because see, speak about the fact that there, there, were, there were issues about Germany 26 and South Africa 2010, starless and all that. When I know the mandate of this commission was really basically about our appearance at the World Cup, I think we all watched the proceedings. We saw how it was going. Maybe after we've read the report, we are truly able to say how the uh, co commission truly captured this. But per what we see in the white paper, it's, it's almost looking a bit too soft in too many, too many areas. Mm -hmm. If you allow a lot of people to walk away thinking that regardless of what we do there will be another commission and people would work people will continue to do whatever it is that they they have to do truly did we have to wait for for a white paper to come for us to know that if indeed you pay two hundred thousand to a head a head of institution is wrong when indeed you should go to to the institution no, but it's very and they I, speak of I, I'm, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not cutting i'm not cutting you short but yes you are supposed to know that you you actually let slip, uh, you know, some two hundred thousand that was actually put in your put in your care. But you see, but you see, slip. but you see, but you see, but you see, the thing is, the you call thing, it a slip. Two hundred thousand slip. Of course, you, of course, you let slip. I mean, you, you you can't tell me that any of them admitted that they really spent the money, so they let slip. But you see, the thing here is that the, the, as soon as the commission was set up, it was supposed to be a process. And the next step in the process is for government to react to the reports of the commission. It will get to the next step. But they step. have reacted. We, we, we can't. That's what I'm saying. And we're not convinced we can't, about we can't their jump. reaction. We can't jump. We are, we are allowed to feel but convinced see, or not? Because, see, because, see, because we, we've my, seen that 20, if, even if we've not seen the 100 page paper, we've seen the what? The 23, 23 page, page white paper. paper. Yeah. Nothing which, about which, that. Three million yeah, which, dollars. Which we, we're not convinced about. That's how, where the again, How come we, we, we actually were supposed to have four million to, to carry there and suddenly we wake up one day and it's three million and there is nothing really definite. We haven't said, okay, let us people refund and, and all that. Okay. And, that, so and, that, that and that is the problem of the white paper, the problem of the commission. So do you, do you think, you think, you think Wait, this is just a start? I think we truly can't say so because okay. we don't have I've got, got around for commercial break. I've got to leave the guests to continue their discussion. We'll go for our last commercial break. When we do come back, we'll focus the discussions on Kotoko and also Didi, are you moving to Swansea? Remember, this particular story is just starting
impacted because I believe it's just the tip of the iceberg. There's quite a lot to come with this GFA and this German Affairs Commission and the white people story. We'll be back in a moment.